Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm just trying to set up the camera here. I tried to do it before, it was a bit of a disaster, so I thought it's easier to do if I'm already live. Let me see. There we go. I'm going to have to straighten this out a little bit. Right. So, thank you for joining me today. What I thought we would look at is, as the title suggests, and you can see on my painting stick here, I thought we'd have a look at painting horses today. Now, I paint my horses very differently to how I paint the rest of my figures. I usually use acrylics. In fact, I almost exclusively use acrylics. And the vast majority of those are Games Workshop paints. Uh, not because I think they're the best, necessarily, but just because that's what I'm used to, and I've got absolutely tons of them. So uh, that tends to be what I use. Now, the figures that we'll be painting today... These are Saxon Guard de Corps. Now, as you can see, I've already done all of these. The main troopers, they are on black horses. And the officers are going to be on the brown horses. So these are going to be for the standard bearer and the officer. I can't remember which one's which. But we'll uh, sort it out. I do apologise for the, uh, the car alarm down the road. But, um, yeah, so I've done all those, as you can see. But don't worry, I've got some lined up to, um, to do. So what I want to look at today is... Using different colours of um, oils. So I want to look at black, brown. I also want to look at grey as well. Here's an example of a grey horse that I've already done. Let me pop that one out of the way. So here's an example of a grey. I did this yesterday. Now it's not perfect. You still see a bit of the metal shining through there. And it's going to need a bit of tidying up. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that. Now the Garde de Corps, as I said, they're all black horses. And I'm not sure how well that's going to show up on the actual uh, screen. So that's why I want to do some browns as well. I've also got uh, some Saxon... No, nope, that's Guard de Corps. I've got some Saxon Karaziers. So they had very dark bays. It tended to be in the Napoleonic period. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule. But it tended to be particularly with the Central European powers. So I'm thinking Prussia and Austria that the darker horses were considered to be better and the less markings also considered to be better. Markings were seen as being a bit of a um, bit of a sign of bad blood in horses. So I'm not sure how scientific that is. I'm, I'm not a horse person, but um, that was the thinking at the time. Now, I've also managed to get out a random Scotsman. And the reason for that is someone posted a comment yesterday saying that I hadn't uh, gone through eagle miniatures on my um, uh, my size comparison. Now, I don't have many. Uh, these are the ones that I've got. One of the best things about eagle miniatures, similarly to front rank, is that you can buy their miniatures individually. So this chap, for instance, he is a British bugler. Now, I'm recently painting up the King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry, the Coilies. And he's going to be in there instead of a drummer. I use Victrix models for my British. Speaking of which, here's a Highlander. And he, let's see how he is in height-wise to the Eagle Miniature guy. You can see the Eagle Miniatures is quite a bit shorter. If we look at the Scotsman, see if I can find my tape measure from yesterday. What did I do with it? Here it is. Um, the Scotsman from Victrix, he is from... Foot to eyes, a little bit difficult because of the way his base is built up. He is about 29 millimeters, I would say. And the Eagle Miniatures chap, he is quite a bit shorter at around about 26, 27. Let's have a look. Now, it doesn't help that the Scotsman's wearing a bonnet as well. Yeah, he's 26 from uh, foot to eyes. So he is two millimeters shorter, which is quite a significant amount, but. Let's also remember that musicians tended to be younger, so that's not necessarily the end of the world. And, you know, I think these are going to mix in quite nicely. I think heft-wise, we talked about chunkiness quite a lot yesterday. He's clearly a lot thinner in the shoulders than our Victrix Scotsman, but I don't think that's necessarily the end of the world. Again, these can be quite slight men. If I was getting Eagle Miniatures Grenadiers, I think that might look a little bit silly. So I would suggest that the light company, who are known to be smaller, more agile men, or musicians, things like that, would be absolutely fine to go alongside Perry's Warlord Victrix. He's probably more in comparison height-wise with 
Um, probably Foundry, not the Foundry Austrians, just regular Foundry. I also said yesterday, I put it in the comments. I kept talking about War Games Factory. I don't know why. Um, they, they weren't War Games Factory at all. It was the uh, the engineers of the guard. They were from Casting Room Miniatures, not War Games Factory. So that's everything from yesterday out of the way. Have a quick check at the old um, chat there. Morning, Steve. Nice to see you, dude. Uh, now let us... Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be able to hear myself. Good Lord. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with this figure here. Now, this is from the set of Perry's British aide-de-camps. Now, the idea here that I'm going to do is this is going to be a brown horse. I've got a grey already. So I'm going to have a brown, and then I might have a black for the third one. I haven't quite decided yet. So I'm going to get my brown oil paint. Now, this is uh, burnt umber. I use Windsor Newton, or occasionally I'll use Rowney Georgian, whichever one the art shop's got in, to be honest. I don't think it really matters. Uh, burnt umber is quite a nice uh, woody brown. It's what I've used here. Uh, and I think that's a really nice brown for horses. I can see I've missed a bit on his belly there, so I'll sort that out later. Um, now, the the thing to do is, remember with the oils, that they last, they, they're wet, effectively, for absolutely ages. So it means that you can squirt some out and then come back to it later. The problem is, though, it means that if you squirt some out, it's going to be wet for absolutely ages. So I tend to use things that I can just throw away when I finish using it. So that's what I'm going to use this packet here for. I'm going to put a little bit out on there. And we'll see how we go on. So there we go. Maybe a little bit more. So I'll squeeze that back in there. Pop the lid back on. So we see there, I've got a fair bit. Uh, let me try and get that in the camera. There we are. Um, now this should be enough for one horse. If I was doing multiple horses, I'd need more than that. And I get quite a large brush. This is a Humbral Hello one. Uh, as you can see, it's a very wide brush. It's quite soft, though. You can use harder brushes, as I've heard that said. But, um, but I prefer to use softer ones. I'm also going to get some terps as well. With this being an oil-based paint, you can't use water to wash it out. You need terps. So I've got that to one side. I'm going to have a little dab. And I'm just going to mix that in there. Now, the key thing here is... Don't let the paint get too thin. You need it thin enough to run, but you don't want it too thin. And you'll see why in a second. But let's get it painted on. Like I say, you need it thin enough that it's going to go into all the uh, the nooks and crannies, the crevices. But you can see here on the rump that the white's shining through. So that's too thin there. So I'm going to get some more oil paint. Let me get this on the, old, uh, on the cutting mat there. There we go. Now, for this one, I'm not going to do too many markings on. He is the horse of an aide-de-camp, so he is going to be pretty uh, pretty high quality because, ultimately, this is the guy who gets your orders around the battlefield. You don't want him on a rubbish horse. So I'm just going to have one stocking there on his front left leg, and I'll go down there like so. Make sure we get in front of the saddle strap there. Told you I wasn't a horse person. I'm sure that's got a, a specific horsey name. But uh, a saddle strap will do for me today. I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments what the, uh, the proper name for it is. It's a bit cooler today. I've got the window open. But if there's a lot more noise outside, then uh, I might have to shut the window. We'll see how it goes. If he starts um, angle grinding again, then I'm definitely going to have to. I think he's remodeling his back garden or something. But uh, he seems to be making a lot of noise doing whatever he's doing anyway. Now, the paint's going on very thick here. And it's going on very textured. Now, I'm not too concerned about that because what I'm ultimately going to do is I'm going to take most of this paint off. So I'm going to just slap it on. Make sure you get the hair as well. This technique's particularly good for doing hair. If I could be bothered, I would do it on things like um, Karazia Crests and um, Dragoon helmets and stuff like that, because I think it's a really, really good way of doing hair. But uh, I, I can't really be asked to be honest. It's, uh, it's 
too it's it's going to slow down the painting process too much if i did that there i don't think the effect is worth it when you're trying to paint whole armies of men so let's get a bit more on there again let's get it on quite thick we don't want it to be too thin so i think that's him pretty much done i'm just gonna slap a little bit on the bellies of these guys who i missed yesterday put that on there put that on there i know you can't see this i know this is off camera i do apologize i need to get a funny angle though to do in the horse's bum crack right there we go let's make sure i've done this one Oh, so I've missed a bit on his tail there. Let's get that done. Fantastic. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wash my brush out. Now, try not to wash your brush out too much because every time you're getting the turps on it and you risk thinning down your paints in future. But uh, let's get that on there. You'll see I'm using a towel to dry my uh, brush on when it comes to turps because... It's just that little bit more absorbent. Now, when it comes to wiping off the uh, the oil paint, uh, right? Yeah, no, sorry, I, I should mention that, shouldn't I? Rather than just spring it on you. Uh, so what happens next is you wipe off the excess oil paint. So what I, you need to do with that is you need a cloth. Now, tissue paper, kitchen roll, things like that, they're not going to work because the problem is with things like that, you've got the fiber in them, and the fiber is going to end up coming off and sticking into the oil paint so you'll end up with a horse that's covered in um like little bits of white fluff so that's no good uh so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a cloth so something like um a handkerchief or in this case an old pair of keks is absolutely perfect and what you do is you just gently rub it across the top now it depends on how deep you want the color to be now that's a little bit lighter than i wanted on the rump there so i'm gonna to have to go back and do that in a second obviously the large flat areas are the areas that are going to see the most paint taken off so you want to be careful when you're rubbing those i'm gonna get my finger in there and just rub this bit off there like so now one of the things to be careful of as well is you can get you can see the direction that you rub the paint off if you're not careful you get like um almost like paint um paint lines like if you're doing a wall or something like that the trying to think the thing that you really don't want so you just need to be careful of that as well might be worth doing it in different directions so you don't get that too much that's a much better rump there i think by using the single finger i'm getting quite a lot more control and i'm getting a much better much result that i'm after so let's see so i might be too much off the muscle of the leg there Just come around to his face now like i said yesterday on the sort of the trail as it were for this video one of the things i really like about doing horses with oils is you get a sheen on them a sheen that you don't necessarily get with uh the the standard acrylics and it's especially something that you don't get with the contrast paints. Uh, like anyone who's seen my Polish paint throughs will know I'm a big, big fan of the contrast paints, but not for horses. They, they ends them up being very flat. So I'm pretty pleased with this. Let's get that up to the camera. So I'm fairly pleased with that. I think I might have taken a bit too much off the back rump. So uh, yeah, the smell is the same as it was in the 70s and 80s uh marshall great it's definitely one to uh make sure you put the lid back on the turps as soon as you finish with it that said the oil paint smell i absolutely love i think it smells oh it smells lush it smells like i'm a real artist and i'm definitely not so it's nice to pretend for once in a while so you can see here now i haven't brushed his leg there where the stocking is i'm actually going to do this black i'm not going to leave it white uh, like I said before, the, in Napoleonic times and before, they considered markings to be a sign of weakness in the horse. Black was acceptable, white not so much. And the other thing with the black one as well is that it um, it fades into the brown quite well. Um, the white's nice. I mean, I can let that dry. 
and I can put a, a shade in there. So I can probably use some apothecary white to get it in there, or I could use um, uh, a white a, a, a white oil if I wanted to keep that sheen. With the white, I don't think it's so important to have the sheen. I think it's more important on the colours. But as you can see, I've popped out some black there. Now this is ivory black. Now, there's two types of black I tend to use: ivory black and lamp black. Lamp black's a lot um, a lot flatter. Ivory's got a little bit more blue in it, so it's just a little bit more coloured, uh, which I quite like because it's not quite so um, it's not quite so like light absorbent. So you get a bit more reflection off it. So let's get a tiny bit of water, um, tiny bit of water, tiny bit of turps rather. Again on here. Now I don't want to do too much, so let's get it in there because I'm only doing half a leg. So I don't want to go wild. So I'm leaving. You might have seen. I haven't done quite up to the uh, the brown yet. And the reason for that is, is I'm actually going to mix some brown and black in together and do that at the join. So I've just grabbed some brown and black. There we go. Now it sh this means... It, you, oh, I just that was quite funky. This hopefully will mean that you shouldn't get an obvious um like oh here's a bit of brown leg and bang here's black leg because that's not really how horses' legs work. Uh, their markings or any animal's markings really they tend to um to bleed into one another the colours. So let's do it up and down. Now I don't want to do it too far up because I don't want the black to go too far up the leg. I don't want it to be a uh, like a short sock, or sorry, a short stocking, or a long sock. So there we go. I think maybe a little bit more black on the back there. One of the problems is that you can get with this technique is the metal can shine through, and that's really not what we want because then it looks like he's riding a metal horse. So there we go. I think that's pretty cool. I'm all right with that. Let's get it up to the camera so we can see. So there we go. So that's very simple. It's very quick, um, and you can see there, you know, it's just that one leg. It's not going to make a huge amount of difference, but it's just something which on the model just helps him look a little bit different from if I just painted him all brown. Now, that's fine if you want to paint them all brown. That's absolutely fine. But uh, for him, I wanted him to look a little bit different, and uh, he's going to stand out a bit there. I think he's going to be on General Hill's base. Or you might end up being the Duke of Wellington's base. I haven't quite decided yet. So the next one I'm going to show you is this one here. Now, the reason I wanted to show this one se separate to that one is you'll see that this is for the casualty of the uh, Karaziers from the uh, Eureka, Eureka Miniatures, Karaziers. And there's no saddle on this one. Because he's a Krasier, he's not on a black horse. He is on a dark brown horse. So we can use the brown again. Now, with this one, it's much, much simpler. I actually prefer the painting of these. But I wanted to show you something that you need to be careful of. So let's quickly get the brown on him. As you can see, much, much quicker than trying to paint around the detail of the other one. The reason why it's important to be neat with this is because obviously you're going to be painting acrylics over the top of, uh, say, that, that one on the saddle cloth. And sometimes the acrylics have a hard time showing through the uh, showing through the oil paints. So, I mean, you can always re-undercoat it, I guess. But uh, I'm just I try and do things with as little effort as possible to try and get the figures out on the table as quickly as possible. So, let's see. Go up here. So there we go, much, much quicker than the other one, and I can be a lot rougher with him because we're going to wipe it off. Now, the problem's going to be is, if we look here, if we look on where his ribs are, where the saddle would uh, be attached to the, um, the strap here, that's just completely flat. So when I wipe it off, that's going to leave a very light area. There's obviously going to be a lot of shadowing in there when I put the saddle on. So that's something to watch out for. Something else to watch out for. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it on the camera. Let's see. Uh, you can just is here. 
a hair has come off my paint because uh, off my brush because the oil paint is so thick and viscous it tends to absolutely shred your paint brushes so keep a pair of tweezers on hand just to get rid of those because obviously if you try and wipe them off you're going to wipe all the paint off at the same time which is kind of what we want but we want to do it more controlled than just to try and get a hair off so that's that done we can get our cloth once again hang on could do if i hadn't dropped it So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wrap the whole figure and just dab it off like this. So it's a slightly different technique to the other one. This is because he's got no saddle. So I can just quickly get my finger in there and wipe there. Now, as you can see, I've taken quite a lot off him. Let's try and get him up to the uh, the light. Now, the Karazio horses were quite dark, so that's going to be no good. Now, what I could do is I could let that dry and then put another wash of oil paint over the top. But like I said, I'm trying to do things as quickly as possible. It's not so bad on this side, actually. But uh, I'm just going to do a little bit more brown on him. Like this, if you wipe too much off, this is, again, one of the great things about oil paints. They take so long to dry that you've got plenty of time to, um, uh, to stick some more on before it's dry. So just gently rub it off there, down to the legs. There we go. Now I'm pretty happy with him. As you can see, I've left it quite dark. Now this is because I'm going to get him done and bang it on there. Now, a better way of doing it, if I wasn't doing it for the video, would be to paint that chap, then rub off sort of this amount of paint, maybe even less, glue him on and then i can wipe off the rest and leave some shade around the saddle cloth when he's done but i'm trying to get him done for the stream so um yeah i'll get it on this uh so that's fantastic so i'm very happy with that so how about you chaps what are you working on at the moment obviously we're still stuck in all this horrible lockdown i'm uh i'm, I'm not sure if i'm lucky or unlucky that i'm still at work but uh, I do think if I was sat at home all day, every day, I'd be going absolutely mad. So uh, part of me is glad I'm not. Just give me a second. All right. So let's get this next Karazio one done. So we've done the casualty Karazio. Let's get this guy going on. I've got somewhere. Yeah, there he is. Because... <laughs> well, okay. Uh, <laughs> right, okay, well that's certainly uh, certainly one thing. I tried to glue them on there last night, but it obviously hasn't taken, so we'll do it this way. Fortunately with these guys, because the, um, the rider is modelled onto the horse, I can hold it by the uh, the rider's head, and we'll, uh, we'll be all right. He's not going to fall off. So let's get that done there. Painting French Grenadiers. Ah, very good, Steve. Is that uh, Old Guard Grenadiers or line ones for your regiments? And uh, Miniature Empire is off with trying to paint many Russians. Yeah, I know. It never ends for the Russians, does it? I've got um, I've got 25 sprues from Warlord I ordered in their sale. And I've got them downstairs. And I know they're waiting for me. But uh, I just can't face them yet. I think I've done most of them. I sprayed them um, like Dark Angel Green. And then I think I've washed them and maybe painted all the white bits grey. So I can highlight up to the white. But uh, yeah, I know there's just going to be loads of work to do on them. I'll be glad when they're done, though. They're, uh, they're nice figures, actually. Ah, Lion Grenadiers. Ah, very good. Are they the, uh, the new Perry's ones? So here we go. I also found as well, I don't know if it's something that... You guys in the chat would be interested in seeing. But um, I've always tried to keep this as being like a miniatures wargaming channel. But I did recently find a card sort of counter Avalon Hill style game of Asper Nestling. 
So I thought, oh, I wonder if um, it'd be interesting to play through that and record it. Maybe not live, but because um, I, I have to work all the rules out and everything. But um, uh, record that and upload that to the stream and have a bit of a uh, bit of a counter and board game thing going on. Obviously, with uh, lockdown at the moment, it's a bit more difficult to get hold of uh, large playing areas and it's things like that for big games. So that could be an option. Let me know if that's something that you'd fancy seeing in the chat. Uh, I'm just trying to sort my cloth out again. Sorry. Dark Angel Green is very good colour, but trying some foundry sets at the minute. Yeah, I've heard they're, um, they're painting... Um, it's like painting triad or something they call it, don't they? And it's, the, it's like a base coat highlight and then final highlight. It looks interesting. Um, yeah, it certainly looks uh, looks interesting. I've been looking around more at um, different paints recently because uh, I've just found there's certain Games Workshop ones that there's certain things that I want that Games Workshop don't quite do. Um, I've been painting a lot of First World War Germans at the moment. They don't really do the green that matches them. And also Second World War Americans. Finding an olive drab has been really hard. So I've got the Army Painter one. Uh, no, sorry, no, the Vallejo one. And it's just not the colour I'm looking for, really. But uh, the problem is, I don't really know what colour I'm looking for. I, sort of in my head, I know what colour Olive Drab is. But uh, it would appear that either I'm wrong, or the paint manufacturers don't agree with me. So it's probably me that's wrong, I would strongly imagine. Right, so that's another brown one done there. Now, you can see that I've left it fairly dark around the saddle cloth. Because of the way you do it with the cloth, you will invariably uh, leave the darker parts in the recesses because you obviously can't get the cloth in there. So you want to use a reasonably thick cloth and don't you don't want to get it in all the nooks and crannies because that's going to ruin the effect. I've just got some watered down um, terps here just to make sure I can get in the cracks here. I'm using it a little bit like a wash. I say watered down. Obviously, it's not water. It's terps that I've used. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera yet. It's a rather disgusting pot, but uh, it does the job. So that's from all that brown, the brown horse I painted yesterday. It was clean yesterday. Uh, and I've got that in there. So I think he is pretty good to go. I'll leave him there. I'll pop him back there and I have to glue him on his base later on. So we've looked at doing browns. I've done three of them now. I've done a... Um, a little stocking on one as well. Uh, I wanted to show you something else now, a different technique, uh, and it's a it's a it's a wash. Effectively, not quite. It's more like a stain or an ink, I guess. Um, and that's for doing greys. Now you can obviously use grey um, oil paint. Uh, I'm not sure what the best one for grey would be actually, because I use this technique. But you can get grey oil paint, so you can do it exactly the same as I've just done with the brown and the black. You can just paint it on, rub it off, jobs are good. But I want to show you this technique here because I quite like it. It's using the oils as a wash. So I want to get quite a lot of turps in there, relatively a lot. I want to bang it on here. Now this has got the consistency more of an ink than uh, an oil paint. Certainly more of an ink than an acrylic. So let's get this going on. As you can see, I'm holding him on the base because that last one dropped off. I've got a horrible feeling this one will as well. Uh, let's get that done. Now most, most, not all, but most, 90% of cavalry regiments would have their musicians, again, usually trumpeters, on grey horses, uh, greys or occasionally whites, but usually greys, uh, and that was so they could be seen in the carnage of a battle. The uh, the musicians were like the the radios of the day, basically. So if you wanted to uh, relay orders, you would use your buglers or your kettle drummers, usually buglers, uh, and they would be the ones who would you know uh, beat the different uh, or blow the different bugle calls rather that would be different orders 
They would also form as rally points as well. Uh, if you wanted to know what was going on, you'd need to get near the bugler. So they wore, they rode grey horses usually. Uh, I think even the Scots greys, or everyone rode grey horse, I think they rode greys in there as well. But uh, yeah, greys or whites were the usual horses for musicians. So usually that's the colour I will do them. It also helps them stand out on the tabletop as well. So you can see I've got this grey all around there. Now I want to wipe off. I want to really heavily wipe this off. I'm not just doing it lightly like I was on the brown. I want to get in there quite a bit and rub this off. You want to be careful. You don't rub too much off because you can, as I said earlier on, you can rub off the undercoat and that lets the metal shine through. And that's a huge pain in the ass because you've got to do the whole process again. But hopefully this one will not be too bad. Let's have a look. Yeah, uh, you see, I've rubbed it off too much on his foreleg there. So I'm going to have to sort that out in a second and possibly on his back leg as well. So let's go there. So you want that shininess, but you can see there's a difference between the metallic shine and just the shine of the oils. So let's get this on there, dab that on. Dab that on his foreleg there. Now with these ones, not too bad. I can probably get a little bit of white on there and, um, and sort that out. That's not really the end of the world. Again, when it comes to the markings, the musicians, they wouldn't necessarily need the best horses. I know I've just said how important they were, but their horses could they were there to get the musician in the place he needed to be didn't really matter on the condition of the horse after that charge or whatever as long as he got him to where he needed to be the uh the more powerful horses they will be given to the actual fighting troops so it's looking like it's really coming off on this front leg there i feel he is Gonna have some leg markings in his not too distant future and now i'm going to do the the final one because i don't want to take too much off those legs so i'm going to do just the uh the tap the wrap and tap technique there there we go i think that's much better isn't it i've taken a lot less off there and that's got rid of that metallic sheen that was shining through so i think there i think he's looking pretty good he's got a bit on his chest there and a bit there as well. So just dab that off. Again, like the chest is obviously quite an important part of the model because that's the bit that you're going to see on the tabletop. But there we go. I'm pretty happy with him. He does not need a huge amount of more work doing to him. As I say, I might paint some stock, some socks and stockings on him later, just to cover up any uh, any bit where I've taken off too much paint. This is a better example. This is what I did yesterday, as I showed you earlier on. Now, the reason I've done him as a grey is because the chap on the back was wearing this black coat on the Perry website. So I thought, oh, that was quite snazzy. I'll go for a bit of that. And I needed him to contrast against the horse. If I'd done a dark horse as well, then he just he wouldn't con contrast. He'd just be like a, a dark blob. So uh, I've given him a fairly light horse. I'm going to highlight him up, and that should hopefully um pick him up have i got any hat 28 mil british dragoons i haven't loki i've seen that they do them and they do them in the bicorn although i think you also get the helmets in there as well i haven't no it'd be an interesting experiment and it's one that i should probably do actually uh, i haven't yet because i've already got two regiments of british dragoons but in the you've you, to be honest you've just reminded me about them so in the future I think I will have to get a box of those and see how they compare to the others. If it's anything like the infantry, they'll be quite a bit smaller and leaner, which I don't think would work very well for British Dragoons because uh, they were used very much as heavy cavalry. They had quite big horses. Uh, but, yeah, no, no, it's a fair point. And uh, to be honest, I'd completely forgotten about them. So thank you for reminding me that they do, in fact, do 28 mil. Uh, British Dragoons. It was something I saw and I thought, ooh, that's interesting. But uh, I never got around to uh, to getting some. But yeah, my if, if they're anything like the infantry, they're going to be quite a bit smaller. And I think they're going to be a lot slighter as well. 
So yes, my my thought would be don't mix them in with anyone else. But uh, that's just speculation. I don't know. So just grab a bit more of this. I mean, uh, this is it really. I didn't necessarily have a huge amount I wanted to uh, to impart with you guys today. This is just a technique of how I do horses. It's not the only way. It's probably not even the best way. But it's, uh, it's how I do it. It's quite an old school way of doing it. My dad taught me how to do this. Um, and I do think it gives good results, though. So I do quite like doing it. Well, I, the way I tend to do it is, because I've always got a million projects on the go at once, is I'll save all my cavalry. And then I'll be like, right, I'm doing an oils paint. So now I get all my cavalry from every period, you know, Assyrian cavalry or chariot horses or... Um, uh, you know, Medi uh, my Norman Knights through to my Napoleonics through to my Death Corps of Krieg, Death Riders, whatever. Uh, get them all together at once and then just do a massive batch of them. So I'll end up doing 40 or 50 horses all in one go. And it just means that I can put all the oils, equipment away uh, until next time then and not have it lying around. When we used to have exercises, if we had, um, if we did like blank... Uh, blank firing exercises then went to live fire you used to have to strip down all your kit and lay it all out and then let the uh, ncos come around and check your kit and then you had to go around and check everyone else's kit to make sure there were no uh no blank round left in the when you went live or vice versa it's more important vice versa really um so it's, i feel i always feel a bit like that when i'm uh, moving between acrylics and oils So there we go. Just dot this guy there. You can see I've left a dark line there behind the back of his saddle cloth. That is very much on purpose. That's to give me some um, some definition there. So there's an obvious transition. Now I've wiped way too much off the legs there. So this is where I'm going to get my black. This guy can have a sock. As I say, you can give them white stockings, obviously, or socks or whatever you want, blazers. So there is a little bit of room if you do make a mistake. It's not necessarily the end of the world. The question is, it's just how do you camouflage that, really? So this guy here, as you saw there, I added in a bit more terps just to make it flow a bit easier. It's a shame because the inside of the legs really nice, but uh, never mind. So I'll get that on there. And then when you're wiping it with the cloth, make sure you wipe into the join. So you make sure that it rubs in nicely. You don't want it to uh, to be an obvious transition. I've done it again. I wiped too much off. Good Lord. All right, there we go. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to take this off the camera. I know it's a bit annoying for you, but uh, I just want to get real close up as I'm rubbing this off. It's because the, the sword scabbard's in the way that uh, I'm not doing as good a job as I could do. So bear with me a second, sorry. At least I know it's off camera this time. Before I was just like, oh, I'm off camera. <laughs> I didn't know. So at least uh, at least I'm aware of it this time. Push that up there. There we go. Not super thrilled with that one, if I'm honest. I think this chap has just got himself a pass into the back rank. Of the cavalry, so he can pop back down there. Next one. So yeah, I've got two regiments on the go here. I've got uh, two Saxon units. Like I said, I got them from Eureka Miniatures. They well, I did well. I sort of got them from Eureka Miniatures. They are Eureka Miniatures, but I got them from Fighting Fifteens, who used to be the supplier for eureka miniatures in the uk they've now set up their own well there is a eureka miniatures uk which i have heard is um you know been set up by them i've also heard that it wasn't set up by them it's like a separate company but they are the official stockist uh either way the figures on the uk one are actually really expensive i'm going to take him off that base before it falls off uh, the UK ones are really expensive. They're, I mean, each cavalryman is, I think he's £4.10, £4.20, which, um, I mean, I don't mind paying for stuff, but that's uh, that seems a little excessive. 
Uh, oh, balls. Uh, so, what I managed to do is get these from Fighting 15s for just over two pounds a figure, uh, which I think is much more uh, much more reasonable. In fact, that's actually cheaper than the Perrys sell their miniatures for, and I think they are as good as the Perrys, uh, but a little bit cheaper. So I don't think you can uh, don't think you can knock that. Also, I'm not sure the Perrys do Saxon uh, Saxon cavalry. As with a lot of the smaller nations' cavalry in the war, uh, the Vistula Legion is a really good example of this. The cavalry didn't actually fight alongside the infantry. They were just subsumed as part of a heavy cavalry division or a lancer division or whatever, uh, and often sent into a completely separate corps, actually. It just depended on who needed the heavy cavalry when and where. And I think... These guys were part of Marmont's troops at Borodino. Now, I could be wrong on that one, but they were definitely at Borodino. There was two, two Saxon regiments at Borodino. There were the Saxon Guard Corps and the... I've, I've forgotten their name again. It's like the Zaptau uh, Karazis or something. Again, as I'm sure they did yesterday, someone in the chat will be able to, uh, to tell me the proper name for them. But they... Um, uh, the Saxon Guard Corps, they left their breastplate in their baggage, which hadn't caught up to them for the time of the battle. So they actually fought without their breastplates, um, which means that every Saxon Guard Corps figure ever is made without a breastplate. When really, I mean, there's only that like one battle that they didn't have them. But uh, it does help them stand out a little bit. They've got these very funky sort of orangey white uniforms that they wore as well. So they're uh, they're a good looking unit. Now, this this figure here. He is looking much better than that last one. So this chappy has just earned himself a spot in the front rank. Yes, he has. There you go. So pop him back there. Now, differently to the Saxon Guard Corps, where the troopers rode uh, blacks, so the officers wore rode bays, uh, the Kraziers, they rode bays, so I'm going to do the officer in, on a black. I don't know if that's historically accurate or not, but this one is riding a black. Again, a lot of officers would be expected to pay for their own equipment. Uh, now, there's a downside of that because it means that you've got to be a certain class of gentleman to uh, be able to afford to be an officer uh, or have a rich benefactor like Sharp did. But then the plus side of it is you get whatever equipment you want because you're paying for it. So if you want to ride a black horse, then you will ride a black horse because it's your horse. So this officer, he has decided that he wants to ride a black horse. And that is what he shall do. Now, hopefully he's glued to the base because I haven't really got anything I can hold on to for this guy. But uh, let's see how it goes. I think I need to get one PVA glue did I use? Oh, it was uh, Wilco's PVA. So uh, don't use Wilco's PVA. Uh, well, to be, to be fair, I don't think it's the glue. I think it's more the bases. I probably should have scored them before I glued the figure on. So because the base is so flat with not much texture in there, the paint, there, the glue, sorry, doesn't really have anything to, uh, to grab a hold of. So it means that when you press the figure down, just all the glue splurges out from underneath him. And it means that there's there's not actually any glue left under there. So I think that's probably the problem. The best way to mitigate that is to score the base. So you just get your um your knife and just scrape, you know, just cut some lines into the base. And that allows the uh that allows the glue to to drip in there and then um it'll it'll grab hold of the base as you're doing it. So that's him. Again, because he's got no saddle on, he's a much easier model to paint. Now I can see already that I haven't painted there. I've had idea. I missed a huge bit there. So that's okay, though. I'm going to come back to that. Let's get that on there. There we go. And under his chin. And around there. Lovely. Again, because it's oils, you can always go back and add more because it certainly won't be dry by the time you get around to... Uh, to rubbing it so that's fair i'm gonna do a little bit on his tail there not too much try and keep it a bit thicker on the tail if you can because it's got all the um the texture on there 
you uh, you don't need to rub so much off. Oh dear, I missed a big bit on his belly as well, haven't I? But um, there we go. Again, if you've missed bits and then you have to go back, don't worry too much because it's going to help blend it in. Uh, and that's the key. You don't really want you know, an area of one colour and then that colour stops and then another colour starts. It needs to be a lot more blended in. And I'm just doing some light light painting there carry on very technique you're using i use for painting my large 80 120 mil horses uh you are right about the sheen on the horse even though i paint my 28 mil in acrylic for speed of drying yeah absolutely it's a um it's one of those things i find with the cavalry that i don't mind the horses taking a bit long to dry because what i will do obviously it's difficult to do with these guys but what i'll normally do is i'll paint the horses first and then do the riders afterwards. So while the horses are drying, I can be painting the riders separately, and then bang the uh, bang the riders on the horse. Hopefully, when they're both dry. I've just seen my camera has slipped a little bit there, hasn't it? Let's uh, try and sort that out. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, right. So now I've got the. I'm working on the black here. Let's do another guard decor. So yeah, I'm not really sure what's uh, what's going on after lockdown. I know there's talk of uh, myself and a bunch of the chaps, some of whom I played in the great game in Edinburgh with, of doing a, a large 1813 set game after the lockdown ends. We'll have to see what happens there. Uh, and with that, apparently everyone's got French, so it looks like I'm going to need some non-French troops for that. So uh, we'll see how it goes. If it's 1813... And my Bavarians are ready. I might uh, I might end up using them. If not, then I shall have to go back to my Russians or possibly my Austrians, depending on how many of those I've got done. The uh, the last video I did on well, last series of video I did on the Austrians really got my uh, my Austrian juices flowing again. Uh, they're such a super cool army. I really really do like the Austrians. Uh, cool uniforms, good personalities. Uh, a reasonable performance, particularly later on in the uh, in the Napoleonic Wars. I think they're... Uh, and also massive as well. If you want an army that looks impressive on the tabletop, when you've got eight or nine regiments of 48 men, uh, all in white, there's no, uh, no denying that they look awesome. It's certainly dressed to impress, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited about the upcoming Spanish releases from... Now, these are from War Games Atlantic. I got them right this time. Um, I'm really looking forward to their infantry. Also, Warlord, uh, they're doing some Spanish infantry as well. They look like three armies. I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm not sure if he sold his range to Warlord. I know they do uh, they do like to absorb smaller companies, although they haven't for a while. Um, I think the last one was probably um, the Test of Honor uh, stuff where... Which they then sold off to another company. So I'm not really sure what's going on with Warlord at the moment, to be honest. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's nice to see some Spanish. Um, I know people convert them out of early war victrix, but their their bicorns are not the same. It's, I know it's a very petty thing to say, but the Spanish bicorns are so massive that they're um, they're quite iconic. I think it's a bit like having. Um, you know, something like a Russian in just a regular Shaco or a Pavlov's Grenadier in a, in a regular Shaco. I'm like, well, that's that's the whole point of them, surely, is the uh, the funky hats. But uh, I get, you know, needs must. Um, and certainly with the lack of metal ranges, oh dear, with the lack of metal ranges of Spanish at the moment, they're, uh, you've got to do what you can do. Oh dear, my camera's definitely slipped again, hasn't it? God, it's a good job it's not slipped the other way so you see my ugly face. God, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Please let me know in the chat if the camera slips again. I'm trying my best, but uh, I, uh, I'm i missing it occasionally. My feed that I've got on my laptop next to me is running quite a bit slow. It's running quite a bit behind. Because I'm getting this done up in the attic, because that's where the lighting's the best. Uh, it's quite a long way from my modem 
So uh, I'm streaming this live off my phone, which E have very kindly given me free data, uh, unlimited, unlimited data rather, um, during this COVID crisis, uh, which is very nice of them. Uh, it's a bit of a bummer because I had just upgraded my um, payment plan to allow me to have more data. But, uh, well, you know, I can't really complain too much, can I? So I'm running, streaming this off my phone's data. Uh, but the internet that my laptop's running off is running a bit slow. So if the camera does slip or anything like that, please let me know. And I will do my best to readjust it. The thing that's absolutely terrifying me is it'll either slip and like you'll get a horrendous reveal of me looking super rough on this bank holiday weekend. Or it'll slip the other way and you'll see the absolute state of my current gaming table because it's just got stuff all over it. So I'm, I've cleared this nice patch so it looks like I'm very professional and I've got a uh, a nice area to work in. But uh, yeah, no, uh, outside the uh, the borders of this frame, it is absolute chaos. So uh, yeah, no, yeah, this, uh, don't want to see that. You try running crisp noise reduction software for your neighbor's building with. I haven't, Marshall Gray. I'm not, I'll be honest with you, buddy. I don't even know what that is. Uh, I am not technically minded but i will check it out after this stream definitely um normally when i record i use a blue yeti which is uh, which is very good uh and has directional recording uh but for these videos i'm not really sure i, I guess if i had uh, i guess if i had like a webcam or something proper i could set up then i'd be able to record through the microphone as well but uh as it is i'm just using my phone's microphone but no the uh the crisp noise reduction i shall definitely definitely look into that in fact i'm gonna write it down hang on it works on android oh right okay brilliant yeah no i'll definitely look into that then uh, as i say i've written it down so um i shall look into that later i've also been uh looking into other features on youtube things like join membership buttons and uh you know being able to create emojis and all all that kind of stuff but uh my technical expertise is uh, is not very good so I've, I've just actually bought a new laptop and i had to talk to my uh to my mate about uh oh is this any good is that any good and to be fair, he did his best. I ended up buying it. And uh, to be honest, I'm a little disappointed with it. It's an Asus one. I'm a huge fan of Asus. They're my last three laptops have been theirs. But this one, the CPU is so slow on it. It's uh, it's not very impressive at all. It does run Warhammer Total War 2, though. So that's the uh, that's what I needed it to do. Um, there's a new, uh, a new supplement for that out. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't run the mods for Napoleon Total War 2. So that's a bit, bit annoying. I've also thought about doing some um, online gaming as well and uploading that or maybe even having some live matches against you guys. So um, if you uh, if that's something that you guys would fancy seeing, I might uh, I might get that up as well. Holding figures for painting, I use double sided industrial tape on all metal bottle tops. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah this is being an absolute disaster, isn't it? I was hoping that you know, this would glue them on and that would be them glued on. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to have worked that way. So, fortunately, because the, the rider is attached to the horse, I can uh, I can hold him by the rider's noggin. And it's not too much of an issue. Uh, you see the uh, the guard decor, you can tell. I'm looking like, oh, which ones are crazy on the guard decor? As I say, the uh, guard decor aren't wearing breastplates. What they did do is they looped their um, great coats or bedrolls over their right hand shoulder, uh, very similar to how you see the Russians have it. And against a saber strike, that's actually surprisingly good protection. I mean, it's, no, it's not as good as a cuirass. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it's actually not bad. And even against a musket ball, again, point blank range. Yeah, you know, it's no good there. But if you're 50, 60 meters away and a musket ball hits it, it might knock the wind out of you, but it probably won't probably won't kill you. And that's, you know, that's the important thing at the end of the day. Um, yeah, it might uh, might wind you a bit, but 
it's surprisingly good protection. It's not something that they uh, they account for in black powder, but uh, it's something that they obviously uh, felt fairly confident doing. Um, and it's uh, it's surprisingly good, especially that you know you got to think it's like thick wool as well. Yeah, he's come off his base there. So let's get this guy on. I can see a huge hair that's come off my brush here. That's okay. I shall get my tweezers for that shortly. Um, bum, 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 bum. I said I get my tweezers. There we are. I couldn't find out what I'd done with them. Uh, there we go. Let's get rid of this. It's probably not worth using a high quality brush on these because uh, you are very much sort of smashing it into the gaps and things like that. So that's why some people prefer stiffer brushes, and I think that's fair enough. Like I say, I prefer a softer one. But I'm certainly not going to say, oh, you know, you must use a soft one or you should use a soft one. Plenty of people prefer hard ones. And I think that's fair enough. Just get some canis around. <laughs> yeah, 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 I might do. Uh, don't, uh, don't tempt me on that one. The thing is, it's not necessarily the building that's going to concern me. It's when they're all having parties and stuff out there at two o'clock in the morning that uh, is going to be the worst part. Oh, now this guy's looking good so far. I've just seen a huge part. Oh, no, he's lo not looking so good on that side. I've just seen a huge bit that I've missed, but I'm not too concerned about the bit I've missed. But I've rubbed off a bit too much on this le foreleg here. Uh, let's get that in there. Now, as you can see, I've got it on the scabbard. I did say earlier on, try not to get it on... The, um, the saddle and things like that, because that's where you're going to be painting. Uh, with metallic parts, it's not too bad, because the metallics I use, the uh, lead belcher from Games Workshop, is quite thick. So it just adds that little bit of... Uh, the only downside is it can add a little bit of uh, texture to it. So I'm going to try and rub off as much of that as I can. Uh, it's still going to stain a little bit, but you can't have everything. And just a bit off the top there. Nice. Get that in there. So there we go. I think he is going to be another front ranker. Let's get that stretch taut there so I can do a bit of rubbing there. Lovely. The problem is, it's when you've got uh, six guys in the front rank and your paintings going on and you're like, oh, no, you can go in the back rank. But he's like the eighth figure that you've done that with. So, uh, oh, I've just looked at my... Uh, Hand wiping it off on a cloth there. That looks rather grim, doesn't it? All right. Okay, so um, what to do next is the question. Um, pop that base there. Pop him on there. Right, I've still got two more Karazio horses to do. So I'll get them done now. I haven't prepped any more than this. I only prepped six of the Karazio horses. So I think what I'll do is I'll do these, I'll take any questions at the end, and then we'll knock it on the head at about the hour and a half mark. So, if you've got any questions at all, not necessarily just about painting horses, but any questions at all about Napoleonics, please ask me now. I'd like to do a bit of a QA and a if possible. Uh, I can't guarantee that I'm going to have the answer, um, but I, I'm, you know, I know a fair amount, so hopefully... I'll, uh, I'll either have the answer or I'll be able to point you in the right direction or something that I have uh, somewhere that will. So if you've got any questions, then you've got the the length of me painting two more horses to uh, to get them in. So there we go. I'll pop those two there. How's this guy looking? He's fairly firm on the base, actually. Excuse me.
Well, I'm hoping that's too much tips and not uh, not too much COVID. Let's uh, let's see how that one goes. Oh no, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say the c word, should I? I uh, I get demonetized if I do. Oh dear. Uh, So Ebenezer Scrooge uh, asks, um, what is the benefit of using oils over acrylics? Well, there's two, two main ones. Uh, the first one is you can do this technique that I've been doing today that rubs the paint off. And what I really like about that is it brings out the musculature of the horse quite well. Now, I know you can do that with washers. And I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, it can be done absolutely phenomenally well with acrylics. I've seen plenty of uh, Golden Demon winners and things like that use acrylic paints. But for me, the the getting the musculature out on the horse, the best way to do it is with the oils because you get because they've got such big muscles, it means that you get a gradient of highlights rather than just being this is low lights, this is highlights. Now, you know, you can do that with multiple layers of highlight, admittedly but you can't do it as quickly as you can by just rubbing it with a piece of cloth. So that's that's my first uh, benefit for using oils over acrylics, is that these large areas, you get to gradually shade them with the minimum of effort, and that's, that's what I'm all about on this channel when it comes to painting. What's the minimum amount of effort we can put in to get the figures painted? And I don't for any second claim to be a great painter because I'm, I'm really not. Uh, but it's also not necessarily something that I'm interested in. I want to do the best I can, but I don't want to spend hours and hours doing multiple highlights on a horse and then see that it's a unit of, you know, um, Austrian hussars. So I've spent 10 hours doing one horse and I look over and I've got another 35 horses to go. You know, I, I, I'm not that guy. So the first benefit is the speed that it lets you highlight those large muscle areas with. And the second thing that I like about it, and that's why I would rather use this than, say, a contrast paint, which would have a similar effect, is you get a sheen on the horses, which you may not see on the camera. Um, it gives you like a very, very su subtle sheen, not necessarily with... Um, uh, not necessarily from the uh like a satin or a, a gloss varnish it's a lot more subtle than that it looks almost like it lo looks almost like wet acrylic uh but it looks like that when it's dry um so you get a nice sheen that horses have particularly when they're sweating they uh they're very shiny through their um they're very shiny through their uh their fur i guess it would be. horse fur horse hair hair i guess it'd be wouldn't it uh, I'm just trying to think what, what the word for the, the stuff that covers a horse is. Um, yeah, through their hair, they get their, their sweat glistens through that. So they get very, uh, very shiny through that. So I think it has that effect really nicely. Uh, uh, what was uh, no chance of catching fire with all the Terps fumes. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to lie. The Terps does stink. On a day like today, though. It's not too bad because I'll be able to open the window. In fact, I can probably open the window now. He's just done some, uh, I think he's doing fence posts. So I think he's just hammered the last one in and he's just cut another one and he's gone to do that. So hopefully it's not going to be too bad. But um, yeah, if you just make sure you've got an open window because it can be a little too, uh, can be a little pungent. I, I hear, because obviously I would never ever do it, that if you get figures from China, they uh, when you open the box, they, you get this like terp smell. Uh, oh, it's absolutely horrendous. The first time you smell it, oh, you have to uh, open all the windows if it's a big box, because it really does stink. I imagine that's the resin that they use. I, I know they say resin's toxic. I always think like, you know, when you're cutting or filing it, you know, oh, you should wear a mask. I was like, yeah, whatever. But uh, Chinese stuff, 
yeah, I would I would actually recommend that you do. Just the smell of it alone, it does not smell healthy. Manolo is talking about painting a Spanish infantry line, Italian 50 mil. Ah, very cool. Any particular one? I have been, here's a uh, uh, Easter egg for all you uh, you guys watching. I have written and printed my script for the next series of Napoleonic Basics, which will be on the Spanish army. I've only done the first one so far, uh, and it is on Spanish infantry. Uh, the next video will be on Spanish Grenadiers, as well as uh, Spanish Guards, sorry, and the Insurrecto, the old uh, the guerrillas. I think Insurrecto is uh, Polish, actually. Um, uh, Austrian. It's not the Insurrecto, but the guerrillas. Uh, and then I'll be doing videos on the cavalry after that as well. So the next video will be on the Spanish Infantry. Uh, I've also got a Napoleonic Figures one lined up as well. Because I've already written it once. And I did, it's on my old laptop. And I threw the script away by accident. I'm sure I did because I can't find it anywhere. So um, I'm going to have to rewrite that one, which is a bit of a shame. But that one is on a British officer of the Portuguese army. So I'm quite looking forward to doing that one. Carl Button, what about Games Workshop contrast paints? Yeah, well, I mean, as you know, I'm a huge, huge contrast paint fan. Uh, one could even say fanboy. Uh, yes, you can use them, and I have used them. If you want to do white horses, uh, yes, the Apothecary White is absolutely phenomenal over a white undercoat. Cannot recommend that highly enough. But it's incredibly flat, like really, really flat, which is fantastic for doing things like uh, Space Marine Armour. Perfect for Space Marine Armour. Or even better, something like Tau Armour. Because it gives you that plastic sort of flatness look that's really, really good for. But for something that's natural, like, like you know, horse hair or uh, skin. Well, actually, the skin's not too bad. But something like horse hair, it, I find it's too flat. That's the problem I have with it is you don't get any sheen or anything like that off it. It's it's very, very matte. And um, I, I don't think it works very well for doing horses for that reason. Uh, let's have a look here. Ooh, this one, I dare say, is looking rather tasty. I reckon he is probably the best one I've done today, actually. He will be, wouldn't it? The, uh, the bloody last one. So this chap here. Uh, Marsha Gray, uh, no, sorry, Panzerfaust, you are painting the Desert Rats. Uh, very good. My brother is painting up some Desert Rats at the moment, actually. Uh, he, uh, no, no, sorry, no, he's not. He's painting up Eighth Army. He's uh, He doesn't really do historicals very often. Uh, and he's decided that he wanted to do a box of Africa Corps. I'm not entirely sure why. But, uh, yeah, he's painting those up at the moment. Uh, Manalo saying your 50 mil are Essex. Now... I thought about doing a comparison of 50 mil figures, but I don't really have that many manufacturers. I do have my own body weight in Essex miniatures, and believe me, that is not an insubstantial amount. I've got insane amounts of Essex Napoleonics. Uh, I really like them. They're very, very small. They don't fit in with any other 50 mil manufacturers, but uh, they are fantastic. Yeah, yeah, they are easy to paint. I love them. They've got so much character in them. They are, without doubt, my favourite 50 mil figures. I don't think they're the best. Don't get me wrong. Um, but they are absolutely my 100% favourite 50 mil ones. So, that's all the horses today done. Um, bum, 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 bum. Let me have a look. So, I've got um, I've got six Carazio horses, including an officer. I've got all my guard de corps horses done now including the casualty, so that's quite nice. And I've got two um, aide-de-camp horses done as well. So I think, overall, that's not a bad morning's painting for how long have we been on air? Uh, 68 minutes, so not too bad, less than an hour and a half. So, Marshall, what do I think of the single-part moulds? Uh, nice, but I haven't finished painting any of them yet. Um, I'm looking forward more to painting, say, these chaps here, 
the ones that are separate. I'm not going to lie. I'm looking forward to painting them more because I think they'll be easier to paint. But so far, not too bad. Um, I think I'm probably going to paint these up next. Um, but I'm going to have to let them dry for a couple of days until I do because the oil paints will take at least a day to like form a crust and then they'll be even longer to dry underneath that. So I might paint the separate riders or I might go back to painting some of my poles or something like that for the interim. There's certainly no shortage of, uh, of stuff for me to paint, that's for sure. So let me just check this. I'm just going to refresh my page. Anyone got any more questions to ask before we knock it on the head? I'm concerned that I'm just going to talk rubbish if uh, if uh, I carry on much longer because um, if everyone's good, if no one's got anything else that they want to ask. Um, nope, no, it doesn't look like it. So I will sign off on this one. Thank you very much for watching, everyone who has. That's a very brief demonstration on how I do horses. Now, as I say... It's not the um, it's not the only way to do horses. I'm not even going to claim that it's the best way to do horses, but it's the way I do horses, um, and it means that I can get through quite a lot in one one go. You have to be a little bit careful with the wiping off of the paint. That's a bit of a technique, but you you know you get used to it as with anything else that you do as a technique. Um, other than that. The main downsides of it are you obviously need specialist equipment. You need terps. And I would strongly recommend that you have separate brushes that you have. These are my brushes for oils. These are my brushes for acrylics. I wouldn't mix the brushes. But, you know, I, I don't know if there's any particular reason that you can't. But for me, I, I just I don't like to have brushes that I use for both. Do you need a special special pants right <laughs> no just just use any pants that you've got lying around the uh the scruddier the better uh try try and wash them first though. I, I would suggest you use clean ones um but the reason i use them is because they are uh you don't get bits of fluff or anything like that off them like you would with kitchen roll or a tissue paper uh you want something that is quite stretchy as you saw there because then you can stretch it thin and just use that to get the parts off. So actually, joking aside, uh, they're, they're actually really useful. So, um, yeah. Yeah, clean ones, gamers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If, if it's the only time you ever wash your pants, then, <laughs> then do it just before you turn them into an oil painting rag. Now, uh, the reason that I've um, used this one, another reason, is I can fold that over. And that'll keep anything getting covered in oil paint. My strong, strong recommendation, and this is from lessons learned, is that once you finish with your oil paints, you've put them on something disposable and you just throw them away. Because in two weeks time, you'll have completely forgotten about your oil paint and you'll stick your finger in it and it goes absolutely everywhere. And it's a massive, massive pain in the arse. So this is the majority of the units. I did these yesterday. Uh, hopefully the next time I'm doing a video, you'll see these charging across the fields, bringing death to either the French or the, the Russians, whoever the uh, Saxons have decided they're going to fight against this week. Um, but I'm really looking forward to getting those painted, excited about them. As I say, they are Eureka miniatures from Fighting 15s. I know I keep banging on about it. I'm not being sponsored by Fighting 15s. Although, you know, I'm open to it if they want to. I'm not being sponsored by Eureka either. I'm definitely up for being sponsored by them if they're up to it. But uh, I'm just saying because they are in stock, they're available while they're in stock. Once they're gone, they're gone. So if you if you think you might be interested in getting some different heavy cavalry, get them sooner rather than later because I think they've only got one regiment of the Guard de Corps left. But I accidentally tried to add... 119 to my uh, uh, to my basket and it said oh we've only got 20 odd left so, and I bought 9 of them so uh, yes that is it for today chaps thank you very much for watching 
I hope you are not having too bad of a hot of a bank holiday weekend. And I'm not sure when the next one will be. Probably next bank holiday, to be honest, which is, what, two weeks? Two weeks away, I think. Uh, I might do one then. If you've got any ideas of something that you'd like to see me do, then stick them in the comments, either on this video or on my Facebook page. I do have a Napoleonic Wargaming YouTube channel Facebook page. It doesn't get a huge amount of traffic, but um, I update when I've got new videos and things like that on there. Probably should more, do more with it, to be honest. But uh, I'm going to knock it on the head there. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. And stay safe. And I hope to see you in a couple of weeks when we'll have another painting session. Might be a bit longer that time. I might do another battalion of poles or something like that. But thank you very much. See you then. Goodbye.